Hey, everybody, this is Sheets. Welcome back. And I have Michael Brave Jayhawk Jensen, and we're going to do another year of, uh, of Survivor Pool content. Um, we're just going to get right into it. I'm just going to give a little bit of an introduction to what we're going to do here. And a little, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the environment, Survivor Pool environment, which has obviously exploded uh, over the last two years, but specifically over the last 12 months. And we'll talk about Survivor in general. We'll talk about the different pools that we're in and, and, and all of that. Um, the other thing is that, you know, it, it's a weird bit of content because, you know, we, 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 we go through like every week who we like, but, but unfortunately it's, as the season goes on, there are less people that are interested because less people are in, you know, uh, including us. You know? so, it's like last year for me. Yep. Including us. And, and like, so like last year, um, uh, or two years ago, I think I was out really early, but we sweated. We had the ability to sweat uh, Michael all the way through winning his pool, like into the playoffs or something like that. So we're just going to kind of see how that goes. Um, so we're going to go through our picks. We're going to go through like some strategies and things like that. And, and the first couple of weeks is going to be a little fishy as far as our timing goes. Um, we just have, you know, to buy personal variants that we're kind of dealing with, but we hope to do it like on a, on a Wednesday or something like that. Uh, because the, the, the longer you can wait before the Thursday, the better. So we'll just see, but just bear with us for the first couple of weeks and, and we'll, kind of, we'll kind of get into it. For, first thing I would note is that, I mean, I mean, I went to, out to I went out to circuit and register or whatever. And, and, and the whole environment is like so weird and changed with, with survivor pool stuff. Like there are like all these survivor pool Twitter accounts. There's all kinds of new advanced tools that, 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 that people are going to be posting and things like that. Um, and Hey, I, I like it. You know, I, I like it. The more challenging it is, the better keeps my brain, keeps my brain working. But the other thing I feel about the environment is, while there are tools available, first of all, so a lot of them are flawed. And second of all, you just have such an incredible new glut of people into the game that that just don't, right. know, you know, and I kind of align this to kind of that period of poker where it was easy to play well enough to lose a little bit, you know. Um, so you couldn't like just do anything and win. But people thought that it was just, you know, you could just look at a survivor grid, for example, look at a survivor grid map. And then be able to make money. It's not exact, so it's a kind of a cool situation where there are now a whole group of people coming in, think that they have something where they don't. You know, so it's a that, that's the way that's the way I think about it. Let Let's go over this first of all. Um, let's talk about what you're what you're playing, and then I'll talk about what I'm playing. I thinned out a little bit this year. Got a lot of stuff going on back at home, so I cut it down to the pool that my partner and I have won three times in the past. Uh, one slash chopped up uh 10 entries in that single entry pool but it extends into the playoffs if you if the pool makes in the playoffs if you did not use a team during the regular season you can use that team two times otherwise you can use them once the three times that we've won this pool it went into the playoffs all three times one time it went all the way to the super bowl Two years ago, it went to the championship round. And then the third time, uh, we both, te both teams, including ourselves, lost in the first round. And the other pool I'm doing, uh, one that I've done the last several years, haven't had any success yet, success yet but uh, it's a fun one because there's a lot of double pick weeks. Uh, there's going to be 20,000 plus entries. I have 40 doubles in 6, 12, 13, 16, 17, and 18. Nice. So I'm doing a bunch. Uh, me and my partner again are doing, we're maxed out circa. Um, and oh, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I told uh, Eric that I would do 10 fake entries of circa just so I can okay. join in the conversation a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Now, just so you know, I mean, I have a link if you're interested. There is a, the site that I work, the proxy that I use, they also have a, um, have a, a circa, uh, a mini which is a hundred dollar entry with the same rules um, that, uh, that, that, that probably going to get a bunch of people. I mean, I'll send you a link to that. If that's something. Oh recent. yeah. Yeah. Do that. Cause that'll make it more realistic. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I'm going to do the circa and, and 
contrary to popular belief, there's more survivor pools out there than certain. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, we've been doing, I've been doing this a long time and, and, and there's all kinds of different variations. One that we have to, I guess, give a, a eulogy to and say goodbye to are the nitrogen pools. Uh, I heard about that. Yeah. The nitrogen pools, which were basically you know, the, the first online pools I was able to ever play really. Um, uh, they finally, they finally got rid of those. I was, I, you know, they, they had their own little, little idiosyncrasies that, in a way made it frustrating, but in a way made it fun. Yeah, so it was, times. it was too much for me. I, I, yeah. I too much anxiety. Yeah. Um, I, I stopped playing those a couple of years ago, but they're rake free. And the yeah. one year I did well in them, they, they froze the picks too early. Right. And then I, uh, in honor of my grandfather, I wrote a letter telling them what my equity was going into the pool. That's and I wanted great. to refund because I, I picked it. I picked up. I, I rolled the dice and picked a small favorite when I could have taken like a nine point favorite and they refunded all my equity, which was really incredible. Amazing. Like that maybe $7,000. ridiculous. I, I think they figured you'd piss it away in sports betting or something like that. They, they... Uh, yeah, that I, I didn't, I, I think I pushed, I pushed, I pissed it away in, in other pools, but right. uh, that was very, very generous. I definitely was yeah. expecting my offer to be accepted. So I'm doing, the circle, any leverage. I'm doing the circle, which as we'll talk about is, is kind of a unique combination of single pools and kind of like scarcity restricted pools where, where you, it's, it's only one, you know, only one entry and, you know, only one, one and you're out and only one pick per week, sort of, but over Thanksgiving and Christmas, you have to pick one, one team from the Christmas, uh, the Thanksgiving day games, and then one from the rest of the week and same thing with Christmas. And we'll get to that. when We get to it. Um, I'm playing a regular single pick pool that uh well not exactly it, it it it's single pick until you're down to a certain number of players so like if it's by week 15 or something they're down to a certain amount and it stays single pick but there's a certain amount left then it goes to doubles um and then probably the fun the most fun pool of all is i play my 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 big double pick one where they have like thousands thousands of entries but but the pool never makes it to the end because they have doubles in week five and week nine to the end. <laughs> so, so that, and, and what's, what's cool about it is that the approach to all different pools is completely different. Okay. Right. So, so, you know, we, we have a discord channel on true DFS, which I encourage everybody to join in kibitz and, and talk about their, you know, their approaches and picks and stuff. But if you came in and asked, Oh, who do you like here? Or what should I do here? It's going to be a kind of a weird, tough conversation because every pool is different. Every rule is different. And then when you get down near the end where the equity matters the most, it, it all completely depends on who everybody else in your particular pool is taking. You know, we're, we're going to talk about, you know, projected ownership and what's, what's, what's should be obvious is that projected ownership is more efficient, like the earlier in the season. I mean, because you have like thousands and thousands of, of samples that are across like, you know, all these pools. So you can be sort of okay with predicting ownership where it comes down to like near the end when you have like 12 people left. On the one end, it's, it's, it's harder. But on the other hand, it's easier because you can see it all in front of you and be able to probably tell who everybody is, is, is going to pick. Um, a couple of things I'm going to share now. Again, I'm not going to, I don't know what well, <clears throat> I'm going to share. So every, every week we're going to share the um this the survivor grid which is kind of like the main thing that you look at to figure out your your, your ev your your popularity and, and and kind of talk about your your path and then i don't know if they're going to let me share it yet but i'm going to reach out to them so survivor atlas has this site that they've been really been developing and it's really really involved um they have projected paths they have they have um you know equity calculations and things like that i'm sure they're not going to have a problem with me giving them free publicity by going through it, but um, I just prefer to ask them first before I, I, I get it. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things that 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 we talk about kind of every every year is, is just kind of basics and basic mistakes people make. At this point, you know the the the, the well, I'll talk about your. We'll, we'll do the same thing every year. I'm going to ask you what you think the biggest mistakes people make. But let me just kind of review. I mean, like. Coming up with you know survivor pool at its at its basic form is each week you have to figure out which team 
first of all, has good EV. That means they're winning chances as a function of how much likely they're going to be played. And whether you might, you know, not, and whether you rate to use them later. Because survivor pool is is not a pool of survival, okay? It is a pool of winning, you know? So, 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 so you have to play to get to the end. And um, so you have to always be thinking about if I use a team now, is, is, am I going to be punished for that later? You know, and, and, and these are the main decisions that kind of drive things. Now we'll be going over some pretty advanced, you know, uh, derivatives of those, of those concepts. That's basically the idea. I mean, you've got to be able as a survivor player to at least, at least go to survivor pool and, and survivor grid and rate and rank by EV and take a look at future value and try to, you know, plan out a, a, a list of guy of teams that can get you to the end. Okay. If you can do that, you're probably only losing like five to ten percent. Okay, so 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 that's at least the first thing you do. Um, I'm gonna go. I'll I'll let you start. I'm gonna. Why don't you go over one, two, three biggest mistakes people make? And and I I have my usual. So if you don't go over them, I'm gonna go over them when you're done. I'm out of town, so I'm limited on my notes that I've taken. But the two that I I definitely brought up every year, and that I more or less live by for the the strategy side of it are at some point you're going to have to take a gamble in these things. And I would always rather gamble when there's a lot of people left than, than be forced to gamble late when there's not as many people left. Of course, I'll, I will gamble late if the opportunity presents itself, but meaning I'd rather save the strongest teams that are going to be the highest favorited for later in the season by taking earlier gambles earlier in the season so I can save those teams. And then the second, and the second one, this is more for, I wouldn't say end game, but it, it feels like end game. survivor pools are not like poker tournaments and poker tournaments. Let's just say thousand people, you get down to 10, you're at the final table. And that's when the payouts start to jump dramatically with each elimination In survivor pool. That's not the case. 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th, they all make the same amount of money. They make $0. So really, when you get down toward the end, that's the time that you really want to take the most chances. If there's, a, if there's an opportunity to, opportunity to really separate from the remaining members of the field, because you're not going to, that pool is not over until there's one person left or everybody's eliminated one week. And what I see every single year is people clamming up when, they're, they feel like they're close. They feel, you know, you're still outside of, you know, an upset coming and knocking everybody out in, in a couple of weeks. It's still going to take maybe five, six weeks to get from 10 down to one. Uh, two years ago, in the last one that we won, it was down to, it was down to six or seven. And there was that Vikings game where they were down by what 31 right it was right before christmas yeah okay well that was like week 15 the pool went to the championship round and you know it, it, there's still a long ways to go when you feel like you're close and that so once you get there that is not the time to clam up and take the same pick as everybody else you, you have to go for it and the best way to go for it is on my first note give yourself the best teams possible to have at the end that have the, the most weeks of being highly favorited. So you have that team and other people don't. So I'm going to get, I'm going to go into mine, but I want to share something relative to your other point about, uh, about people being too, too, uh, too tight, uh, especially later. There is something that, that might, well, specifically for Cirque, I guess, might put a little wrench in that is that there's now, like this whole like hedging platform out there now. Okay. Where people can sell shares of their, of their, of their, of their stuff and sell shares of their, of their entries and, and, and hedging companies and things like that. So I feel as though that the ability to hedge being made easier might embolden people a little bit more, I guess, um, uh, to make the correct play later because you don't know if they're going to be hedged or not. You know what I mean? Like, uh, or, or it could work the opposite way. It could work that 
boy, if I could just get through one more week, I could sell my entries. <laughs> the reason the reason I would disagree is the the value of your EV is going to be based on what your pick is relative to the field. The first year they ran Circa with the Christmas slate. I don't know if that was the that was the second year. I, I was already out, but it got down to the Christmas week, and it was fascinating what happened. One person was a genius. Of course, they did. I think they ended up chopping, but there were like eight people left, and someone picked the underdog on Thursday, and there were three Christmas games, and they were like a three point underdog, and that team won, and a, a couple people got knocked out on it, and then on Christmas. The first upset happened, and then the second game, it was Cleveland versus Green Bay. And everybody had saved Green Bay because they were going to be the, the highest favorite on Christmas. And this person's sitting there at Christmas dinner, yep. and the the refs had – I love blaming you – know, I love blaming the refs or the, or the bad coaching. But Cleveland had the ball at midfield down by less than seven with like a minute left, and – the refs had made a horrible call. That should have been an automatic first down. Instead, it was like an interception. This person would have won $8 million if, if Cleveland had scored. And they, they, they put themselves in that position by taking the underdog on Thursday. Now, I would be all over buying equity into that entry if I knew that person was right. going to take the Thursday underdog. That's true. But people aren't going to be advertising that for obvious reasons. Yeah. And they're probably just not going to have the guts to follow through because, like you said – They'd rather survive another week, but really, where all the equity is 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 in these very very small slates where circa where people are saving certain teams. If, if you if you can see that happening as the weeks progress, it's always it's always with Dallas. There'll be these weeks where in, in other pools, Dallas is 25 percent picked, where in circa they're five percent picked or less. Okay, well that means you should probably you know, probably take Dallas at some point before or after the Thanksgiving slate and then just get on a different game and just hope it works out. So let me, let me, let me uh, go through my, go through, and you didn't touch on mine because mine are just so basic and obvious. Yeah. I'll be able to go through it. And this is something, again, it affects all of us. Well, it doesn't affect me, but it affects some people. Okay. Um, but first thing you, you have to accept, okay, is that, the Vegas lines are accurate, okay? That if a team is expected to win 72% of the time, as implied by Vegas, then they are going to win 72% of the time. Is that 100% correct? No, but it is the best predictor of what the teams are going to do. And that, that presumption, you must take to heart. And then what that means is that if a team is 72% to win, it doesn't matter whether they are at home or on the road. It doesn't matter whether they're in a divisional game or a non-divisional game. It doesn't matter whether the QB is injured or not. Nothing else matters from your own biases and, and, and interpretation aside from that actual money line. Okay. Okay. Right. And, and it's it's something that and, and when you start talking through these things and you hear you'll see people talking about this stuff in survivor threads and in on Twitter. It's like I'm, I'm not playing the Chiefs or excuse me, I'm not playing the Raiders. It's a divisional game. OK, so you already know that that's dead money. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that, that's that's the reason I had to get off of. I still post on two plus two a little bit each week, but I had to get my own. Uh, group chat on Telegram about four or five years ago because I, I I couldn't take it anymore right. Right. of, of uh, that uh, conversation. So, so we can't take it, but we'll take their money. It's fine. So 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 the 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 other thing, and this is a, a derivative of that, but it's something that can really mess with people. Uh, I'll 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 put it. To, I'll, I'll I'll give the uh, I'll give the uh, the the introduction. I I said to my partner, I said, Hey, uh, what do you think of uh, say uh, uh, Buffalo, for example? And he like loves betting sports. He loves betting against the spread. He likes doing whatever. Okay. And his response is, I like Arizona plus the points. Okay. All right. I do too. As if, that, as if that answers my question at all. Okay. <laughs> about survival. Um, and I went back to him. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I won't. And there was something that he didn't want me to do. I won't do this, this, this. 
and I, you won't hear from me about this for the next six months, if you promise to not share with me you're against the spread pick and spend opinions for the purposes of these survivor discussions, okay? Good luck. It, it, it just doesn't matter, okay? If you have an opinion on the spread, go bet it against the spread, okay? Fine by me, okay? Go into the circuit. Uh, that's another story. Right? Go into other contests that reward you for being able to pick against the spread, okay? You have to be... You know, I have to have ice in your vein. You have to be completely unemotional. You can't even know who's on these freaking football teams. Okay. You have to just look at these things as, as data points on a, right. on, on a, on a, on a scorecard. And, and Simpson, like, what if it's like an actual tie? I'm like, well then break it some other, you know what I mean? Like there's no such thing as an actual tie. Okay. So, so, so you just, you just rely on the numbers Rely on your on your on your path. Do not let your instincts about these teams or or the 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 preconceived notions of what's supposed to happen happen or in, impact you. And you 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 right now before week one you're like yeah of course sure that makes sense. But you know we're human beings and it, and it messes with people. You know I, I excuse me, if if I'm not mistaken, one of us who shall remain nameless didn't want to be rooting against the Chiefs or something like that. In, in a, in a, uh, in a, when you were going to a bar or something like that, and you broke a tie by playing against the playing the Chiefs or something like that, there was something involved with the, with the state of Kansas. Um, I, forget, I, I forget exactly what it was. I, I, I wanted Kansas to, I wanted the Chiefs to lose an AFC championship like that. game, but I, but that's because of what we had right. set up. Right. But I, luckily, I got off of it yeah. right at the right time. Right. So, yeah, so, so up. again, and we'll, I'll, we'll remind you every single week of these mistakes. Okay. Just so that you don't do it. So let's let's just get started. I mean, I'm sharing the screen. And the, the last point I want to make is the it is so much better to take your chances earlier yep. and get knocked out, and then you get to guess what? You get to enjoy the rest of the season. I enjoy. I, that's what that's the strategy I used last year and four years ago, um, and then two years ago I won it, and I've won, and there's three or four other years that I've won various pools. Yep. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you, you got it. You, you, it, it only feels like week one, but as we're going to go over right now, there are like six teams that you could take in the first week that if you take them, you're, you're really burning up a lot of your, your, your future equity by wasting your time picking one of these teams. Well, well let's, let's, let's just get right into it. And you, I'll, I'll always kick it off with, 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 uh, with, with Mike and you could talk about it from whichever pool perspective you want, you know, whatever it is. But I want to start, I, I want to actually sort by, um, you want to, let, let's start. But sort. I like remove, I like removing teams first. No, but I mean, when I just want to ask you about certain teams, uh, oh, let's yeah. sort by win percentage, like the most likely to win teams. And then you can go down and, 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 and talk about them that way. Let's just start. Let's let's just start with let's let's start with Cincinnati, I guess. Like, or, or Cincinnati and Buffalo. They're the two that are over seventy percent uh, mm -hmm. to to win. Uh, let me just say one thing: is that as far as popularity goes, you'll have Buffalo at fourteen percent or so. Uh, and again, for circa things might be a little different because of the different structures. But for now, and and you have been the Bengals at forty one percent. What do you think of those two teams? Well, my only comment on point spreads is if there's ever a week where the point spreads could be 100% wrong, it's week one. The Rams were like four or 500 to one to win the Super Bowl back in 99. They ended up having the best football team of all time. And that's, that's really stuck with me these last 25 years. We could assume that Cincinnati is going to have a very good team, but you don't know. I mean, what if, what if, you know, what, what if, uh, you know, Burrow takes three huge steps back? Uh, what if, um, Kyler Murray ends up being the best quarterback in the league. Week one is the week where the spreads could be wrong. And I really use that a lot. Whether that's correct to say that or not, I mean, I think it's definitely more accurate than what – I mean, week five spreads are, are, are going to be much more accurate than week one because we already have four weeks of information. Um, so my strategy for week one is I really like to lay off the highest favorite of teams. Um, it, and, you know, there's obviously a threshold where that cross is over. If, you know, if it seems like 16-point favorites, uh, there was one year where I, I just went all in on them, like New England or something. But, um, I mean, I like Cincinnati, but I would, I'm, I'm, I'm not playing them in anything. They, they have way too much 
uh, potential for later in the season. Um, they're a nice team, but, you know, they're also going to be four. I mean, according to this, around 40% picked. And I'm just going to – this is going to be a fade save for me. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna hope that – who are they playing? New England? Mm -hmm. I, oh, okay, I guess I'm hoping – who's their quarterback? I don't even know. Some rookie? I guess I'm going to hope he's the best player in the league. And if not, who cares? Cincinnati has a lot of playable uh, slots throughout the season scattered around. And th I have three, four, six, nine written down for the more immediate future. And they have plenty at the end of the season. So I I'm not, I'm not going to play any Cincinnati. And this is something that more or less every single season, I don't take the highest uh, pick team. I, I, I just don't do it. Um, especially when it, reaches this type of threshold i i doubt they're 40 percent picked in most pools that seems very high what, what do you think about that i think it could be more uh do you think it could be more i do i hope so yeah um what do you think of buffalo and then i'll talk about cincinnati oh. you know I, I i like buffalo i i'm gonna say so i i'll say honestly of all my fishy uh comments uh for week one um man i looked at that i looked at the depth chart when i was doing my my one fantasy draft the other day and that was a weak-looking skills team um, at, uh, that in, in support of Josh Allen. And, you know, they really don't have on, you know, at the beginning of the season, they don't have very many good plays. Week 15 is a long way – week 16 is a long ways away for me. I think this would is a superior play to Cincinnati just because Buffalo really – they have here and they've got week uh, – what, three, three and seven – in the, in the immediate future. I, I like Buffalo. I'll, I'll be playing some of them for sure. Uh, you know, the, the pick percent, you got to pick somebody. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to pick all four point favorites. I'm going to be picking plenty, plenty of them this year, but I, I like Buffalo because there's a good chance. This is like their best game all year. And I like, I like picking teams when it's their best, when, when at, at the current situation, it's their best pick the rem uh, remainder of the year. And that re re really could be the case. I, and, and, and I'm discounting the last few weeks where it's just so far away. I'm not going to circle the New England matchup in 16 and just save them for there. That's 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 too far for even for me. Yeah, I'm going to start with Cincinnati. Um, you know, I, I'm going to have 20, 20. I mean, let's just, let's just talk on my part. Like 10 entries in Circa, like 27 entries in that big double pick pool. I'm going to have like 20 entries in my single pick pool. I'm going to have maybe I'll maybe I'll throw 10 or so into DraftKings also in like their pool. I, I'm not going to have a share of Cincinnati. I mean, there's, there's just no need. Uh, I, it's, I just have no interest to me. Their EV sucks. Their future value is high. Yeah. It's just, and, and the way I just described it to my partner, he's like, should we even play one, one or two Cincinnati's? I'm like, let me ask you another, another way, Jack. I mean, what, what is that doing for you? You know what I mean? Like, what, what is that doing for you? It, it's almost like you give it, let's just separate that entry. You give the thousand dollars and you immediately get back like $992. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just, it's just not doing anything for you. It doesn't provide any equity. It doesn't provide any help to your path. It's just an, to me, it's just an atrocious play. So I, I'm going to have, I'm not going to have a share of that. Um, Buffalo, as, as you mentioned, I, I, I am going to have a share. Um, uh, I am going to have some of that. And the reason why, again, let's just start with, with, with uh, EV. I mean, their immediate EV is very strong. One of the top two, um, whether you do office football pool or average or whatever, they're still one of the top two. And like you said, th there, listen, there are spots. Okay. To use them. I mean, you could, you could certainly use them in seven, right. In a tough week, you know, uh, you could certainly obviously use them in 16, and yeah, I do think that Buffalo is is better to be used in seven and sixteen, but um, I, I'm going to have a little bit. Um, I honestly don't even know if I'm going to have as much of the field as the field. Maybe I'll have like ten percent of Buffalo or something like that across the board um, because they do have future value. Um, so what, the, one thing I want to throw out there, one of this last two years, when you're when you're thinking about taking a team. Use this site and visualize it. Can, can you cross out the, the Buffalo, give it a red line? And then can you click on week three, please? So what, what, what I do when, I, when, I, when I'm doing my mapping, so they have, I like to look at what this, you know, for, the, for the other current playable weeks, so in Buffalo's case, case, weeks three and seven, where do they rank in those other weeks? Like, would you even want to pick them? 
Now, in week three, certainly, there's a lot of choices. I mean, and, and the reason there's a lot of choices is a lot of the teams there list, uh, sorted by week three are teams that really aren't going to be very heavily picked in a lot of other weeks. At, at current spreads, you know, Las Vegas, Tampa Bay, uh, uh, Cleveland, and then, you know, the Jets have like two outstanding weeks back to back. But for week seven, you know, bu- at, at current spreads, Buffalo – you know, is, is a is on the potential fa- is really on the fave side. So, you know, you re- I think this is the reason I, I liked Buffalo. Uh, spreads are going to change, but for my purposes, when I'm mapping, I have to I have to have some baseline. And my baseline is I'm going to use what what the current spreads are right now for every single week going forward because that's that's what they are. It's going to change, but I have to have some basis to make my make my decisions and. I feel there's a good chance that I'm not going to want to be taking a lot of Buffalo as it currently stands in week seven. So for me, I, I'm not going to really get, it's going to, you know, to get through the whole season without taking Buffalo. That's, that's going to be a, that's going to be a stretch. You're really going to be dropping, you know, more than you need to on some of this, these other weeks. So I would rather use them up front. I'm actually going to use much more than 10% of, of, of Buffalo myself for, uh, for this reason. All right, so why don't we do the next group here as far as uh, as winning percentage? Se- Seattle, San Francisco, New Orleans, Chicago. Um, can, we, can we knock out a couple of the LOLs first? Yeah. Um, so San Francisco is a worse place than, than Cincinnati. They have I, – I'm pretty sure they have the best schedule, right? Yeah, they have the, they, they, they have the highest strength for a survivor pool. They got week four, five, 10, 11, and then a bunch on the back end. You, you cannot take uh, San Francisco regardless of what the format is. They're, they're far too valuable. And this is one of their weaker weeks in terms of how favored they are compared to some of those other ones. So San Francisco, is, is, it's not a consideration. I and agree. I, agree I, 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 I like doing this strategy, especially at the beginning, because you have, there's so, there are so many choices. You can conceivably take like 12 different teams or something in week one, assuming, you know, two and a half or three point favorites or, or, or better. You got, I like to eliminate first. And that, that's a clear elimination um, from, from your selection process that, that, you know, the Chiefs are also one of those. They're playing, you know, they're a three point favorite, you know, very easy just to, uh, to, to, you know, get rid of them. It helps, it helps thin the group. It, 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 instead of looking at 10 teams, you know, you're looking at five and what you're doing here, you look at each team and then you look, you know, further out and there's two groups here. There's a bunch of teams that are between three and five point favorites. And for some of them, it's one of their best games all the year. And for the others, it's one of the many games that they're favorited. And if it's one of the many, those that, you know, those teams you can, you know, just disregard. Talking Detroit, Miami, Philadelphia, and Houston, in addition to San Francisco and Kansas City. So what do we think then uh, about, uh, let's get rid of some of these we've already talked about, Detroit, Miami, Kansas City. Do Do you agree with all those? Oh, I agree 100%. Okay. 100%. Hundred percent. So let's talk then about uh, the next group. Is the, is 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 Seattle, group. New Orleans, Chicago, and Tampa. Um, I guess I'll just start. Yeah. Um, so this is where three of these four teams I think are the three premier plays of the week for me, um, and that's going to be Seattle, New Orleans, and Tampa. Um, all of them kind of fit the criteria. They they have decent enough EV this week, and their future is is grim. Um, it looks and you can make cases that maybe Seattle in week five or somewhere. Uh, remember, you guys may have heard that I, I you know earlier that there's a pool that I'm gonna have to go to doubles in week five. So maybe Seattle's a you know a little more usable there, but I think Seattle's is a perfectly strong play. New Orleans, uh, who basically I picked as my top play when the schedule came out back in May. Um, I don't see any reason to change that. They, 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 they win often enough. And, and you look at their schedule, that looks pretty grim, too. I mean, you could sort of make a case for them in seven, um, but, but there's just no need right now. And, and Tampa, 
uh, similar. Listen, it's scary to take four point one favorites, but whatever. You know, same thing. Their EV looks good enough. Their one point oh one EV, which is actually better than Cincinnati's, or about the same. And their future value is very, very slim. Yeah, they're you can save them to seventeen. Like if you're worried, I mean, like, but if I get to seven, but but if, if I get to seventeen, first of all, uh, I'm happy anyway. And second of all, if you do actually get to seventeen, they're going to be like a hundred percent on anything. In yeah, every, every, they're they're going to be hundred percent available. <laughs> so, so so those three, I really like a lot. The only thing that's stopping me from putting Chicago in that group is week five. They're strong. Week ten, they're strong, and in Circa, they're a Christmas team. So, so I have to yeah. kind of say, so um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on Seattle, New Orleans, and Tampa, and whether you put a little more look into Chicago. Okay, so I'll start with Chicago. Uh, so I did, I, I did map out a little Circa last week, looking at, because for that one, it's very simple. I heard they, they have over 12,000 entries so far. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I think so. Okay. So the thing's going the distance. Um, you you have you have to play for this right. pool to go the distance, and that, and I like these pools because when you when you're playing to go the distance and you're and, you're, and that's a reasonable assumption to make, you can just take a lot of chances uh, because taking those chances are is what can, is going to put you in uh, the position to potentially not just win the pool but scoop the pool. The whole the, the point is to make the most money. It's not winning in a twenty. Uh, the first year they ran circa, we lost in week sixteen or the second to last week. If we had won, it we would have been part of like a twenty four way job. Right. Um. And and and, and you know we're still just uh, would have won love to have won that, but uh, that that's sometimes just you know what you just have to do. Um. But we lost the third to last game, and we it turned out all of our saving people did similar stuff. I wouldn't say we did anything wrong. It's just our our separation games didn't really pan out. Our separation games that year were in a, were in an earlier week, but it it just didn't work out. You, ha- I think you just have to save Chicago. The reason you have to sh- save Chicago in Circa is not just because of Christmas, but because of those other weeks five and ten. I'm not necessarily going to like five and ten for Chicago for some of the other pools because I think they're going to be higher picked. But when you have to pick 20 winners as opposed to 18, you know, Chicago is going to be it, – it's, it's going to be more desirable in, in Circa because you don't even need to save them for Christmas. You could also just use them in five or ten, and they'll be less picked those weeks than they would in other pools. So I, I, would, I would not take Chicago at all in Circa. I, I think they're far too valuable uh, for, for, for Circa specifically. On the other side, I like Chicago is my favorite pick in a traditional pool for the exact opposite reasons. Um, they're going, they're, they're, they're a team I'm, I'd rather not take as much at five or 10 because I think they're just going to be more owned than they will be in week one. And if I'm looking at the usability of Chicago for weeks one, five, and 10, I just think as it is right now, they'll have the smallest pick percentage in one. So I'm just going to take them in one we'll, where, where they'll be le- uh, the least amount picked. And then for Circa, you'll just wor- I'll just worry about Chicago. Well, I'm saying I, I'm not doing it, but um, I would just wor- I, I'd still worry about it later because you're not just saving them for Christmas. There's, there's, a, there's five and ten as well. Um, the other ones are really hard to – separate from one another it's a pretty clumped group between new orleans seattle and tampa bay you said all three of those right yeah i mean i like them all i i I mean i I guess if it comes down to if i'm doing i'm doing a portfolio play so i'm picking all of those teams but if i were picking if i was in one pool only i wouldn't take seattle just because seattle is going to be you know higher picked than you know say tampa bay but i i like them all um whether for if you're doing one pool or whether you're creating a portfolio picks you're really nitpicking because so much of what makes one better than the other is how strong or weak their teams end up being um i i have written down here that 
Seattle has the, the least desirable finish or potential finish. And I like New Orleans and Tampa Bay for later as possible, as possible teams that I would want to have, you know, for the end. And I'm just going to stare at the screen here awkwardly if my face is being shown. Um, I mean, Seattle's at, at from week 13 on, they just have a much tougher schedule. They've got four road games and two home games. Their home games are against Green Bay and Minnesota. And you look at New Orleans, you know, they're playing at the Giants, Washington, Las Vegas, at Tampa Bay, and then Chicago. It has uh, – no, I'm sorry, not, I'm sorry, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is playing Las Vegas, Carolina, and New Orleans. I, if, if I'm, I, I like to use that as a tiebreaker. Um, who has the, the stronger finish is the team I'd rather save or not eh, – save's not the best word. Whether I'd not I, the one I'd I'd rather not use as much. I'm going to pick all of them, but I'm going to probably wait more toward Seattle. the The problem is they're higher picked than the others, but whatever. Uh, they're also higher favored favored than than the others. So 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 now we talk about the teams that we that, that uh, Mike likes to say we dropped to. Okay, uh, t- teams that are less than sixty percent to win um, that you can use to be different. You could use to, um, you know, be aggressive. You could just kind of steal the team in a huge pool that if you get away with it, it just naturally gives you a strong entry. Uh, in, 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 in situations like this, you really want to play teams that have like no future value if you're going to drop, okay? Like you could drop to, like, to give an example, like the Philly, who's got only 54% winning chances, but their future value is so big. So, the two, the two teams that I identified, well, there are four. I mean, if you really want to get nasty. So the, 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 the two, like, logical, you know, only sort of psycho plays you can make would be the, 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 the Chargers and, and the Falcons. Um, and I do, I do think that both of them are extremely valuable in the right pool. Um, and then the other two, I don't have to opinion on this, if it's just go super psycho. It just whenever I visualize and I see this future value, like literally at a zero, like on the right, I, I just can't help it. And so I see both Minnesota and the Giants playing yeah. against each other. Um, and uh, either of those <laughs> could be uh, could 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 end up being just a super psycho steal if you get away with it. So what do you think of Chargers Atlanta, then Minnesota Giants? And is there anybody I missed? Um. I actually I don't like the drops this year. I, okay. I, I'm not gonna. I'm and the reason I don't like them is, I mean, no one's picking Atlanta this week. But again, for for my pools, you know, I have some double pick weeks for the, for for one of them. It's you know, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So when I'm looking for like my tiebreakers, yeah, everyone's gonna have Atlanta available w- when you get to that point. But you know, if you get to week eighteen, not everyone's gonna have Atlanta available at these current spreads. They'll, you know, they'll they'll have been used in. Uh, you know, in, in, in weeks 16, I believe, uh, week 16, I believe. Yeah. Well, but maybe even week 17. So Atlanta, I'm just not going to use Atlanta because I, I, I look at this pool. I played it four or five years and even the craziest years, like last year and a few years ago when one, one week they're like nine upsets, you know, the thing still went to like week 16 and then they chopped it. So, I, I mean, if if I did if I was still there, I might not chop it, or I might chop for some of it and keep playing. I I want to have as many teams as possible that have week sixteen and seventeen opponents. And you know, if Atlanta only had again, Atlanta's not a good team, but look who they're playing at the end of the season. You know, that's a really really weak run out. It's probably the the weakest run out last three game stretch of any team, and I. When there's a, if there's one choice, oh, they play the Giants. Who cares? But they're let's say they're let's pretend that their week 17 and 18 matchups were, were were tougher ones. It's not as desirable to save Atlanta for for that possible scenario because there's only one spot to use them. But when they can be conceivably used in all three of them, I, I would rather just you know hold on to them and then take when because I have all these other options: Seattle, Chicago, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, uh, and for me Buffalo. 
I, I would rather use those teams because I think Atlanta is more desirable than than those other teams for the end game. Okay. And the Chargers, you know, you know, ca- kind of similar. I, I, I they've got they have Tampa Bay, Denver, and at Vegas and at New England. So th- th- their their final four game stretch is, yeah, is pretty right. weak too. So and and I, and I feel the same just for a single pick. Um, especially like something like Circa where you have a couple, you know, you have a couple double pick weeks. You're, you you have to use the, to win Circa. You got to win. You got to pick twenty winners for a traditional yeah. pool. You got to pick eighteen. So to give yourself a visualization, you know, sort the sort the teams by their over under for win total, and then go down to twenty. Go down to eighteen on the list. You're not going to necessarily pick that team, but that's how low on the list you got to go. And when you see, oh, I have to take these teams at some point anyway, you know, it's kind of better to take them when no one else is taking them because there's going to be plenty of those weeks. We talk about it, you know, the last two years on the podcast. And I think about it every year that I'm mapping. You're going to get to these later end, uh, these, these games later in the season where everyone's going to have, you know, team X, Y, or Z available. And they're going to be, a seven point favorite playing against a team that hasn't won yet. And do you really want to take them when they're going to be 50, 60, 70% owned, or do you want to drop to a four point favorite there? And that's, that's what I'm always going to choose to give myself, you know, that, 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 that larger separation. Um, But you're going to have to take the weaker teams at some point anyway, but you want to take the weaker teams when they're not going to be, as highly picked as they might be when you're more or less forced onto them later. If you're going to go out there, I mean, I, I guess whoever the favorite between the, the Giants and the, and the Vikings is, 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 is a good one, but I don't think it's necessary. I, I, I won't be doing any of that, even in my, my $25 one with four, 40 entries. I, I'm, I'm just going to stick with the other group. Um, I think this was a pretty easy one this year for at least week one eliminating some obvious, you know, uh, saves, um, you know, eliminating a fade, like an obvious fade save, like Cincinnati. And then the hard part was, okay, well, how the heck am I going to pick between these five other teams? But that's a good, that's a good problem to have. And yeah, there's, I think there's four, there's four great picks. I, I wouldn't say Buffalo is a great pick, but Chicago, New Orleans, Seattle, Tampa Bay, I think those are all very sound picks. Uh, with the best being the ones that, that are the least picked. Uh, but what I saw last year, when you when you have, I saw some very large discrepancies for the uh, the pick breakdown percentages on some of these weeks, where you know each pool is going to be different. This is what the average is for you know for these sites. You know, Seattle could be twenty percent picked, um, whereas some of these other ones might only end up being two or th- you know two two percent picked. Um, this. Just hope to get on the one that the, that that the least amount of people pick, and then hope it works out. Well, the good thing is this: so so last year in circus specifically, it became a very um, uh, future value or or save team type of pool. Uh, teams that were projected to be like twelve percent owned that were a team that was kind of obvious that you wanted to use now because you have no future value. They ended up being like 20 in some cases, you know? So, so oh, yeah. that part of the game is, is kind of picked up the pace. So um, I, I'm curious to see, but I, I would imagine that the, like Seattle and New Orleans are going to be uh, two candidates for extended ownership. You know what I mean? Like 10% and 10% or whatever. I I'm, I'm expecting to see at least one of them be 15, um, maybe both. And, and what's, what's, what's good about that is I'm going to play them anyway, but, but, but it's, it, it's good information to, to, to get, you know, like if it turns out that they're, that they're both 20% owned, then for future weeks, you can adjust your ownership projections on yeah, correct. like that, you know? Um, so it's very easy to predict which ones will go higher. For sure, yeah, for sure exactly. So, so just to summarize, we're, we're, we're not always like this, but we're pretty much in lockstep this week, you know, as far as, as what we like. I mean, the one it's, thing. It's dangerous because if yeah, one of us lose, I mean, so, so we, listen, we, thanks, we for, both thanks lose. for tuning in. We'll see you next year after we, uh, <laughs> after Cincinnati wins and everybody else loses, you know, um, and that's, it that certainly happens a non-zero amount of the time. Um, but uh, just to reiterate, uh, Seattle, New Orleans, Tampa, Chicago, definitely pool dependent. For traditional pools, definitely a, a very, very strong play. 
in pools where you need to save them for Christmas, a little less so. I would say a lot less so. Um, uh, New Orleans, uh, excuse me, and, and Buffalo, um, maybe you're a little stronger on them than I am, but, but nonetheless, we're both pretty strong on them. And I think we're uh, good to go. Um, next week, um, uh, again, we're, um, I'm a, I think that we're going to try to get this out early, not because I want to, but because we have to. Um, and, uh, That'll do it. Uh, thanks, Brave Jayhawk, for showing up. And uh, look, try to check out the True DFS Discord channel. That, uh, and and uh, the more the more action we get on there, like the better the, the conversation is. Um, and uh, feel free to like the video and drop any comments in there, and that'll do it. All right, good luck, everybody. See you, See you next time.